the first station, Jesus is condemned to death. In our picture, the artist depicts Christ being led from prison, watched by the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo in Buenos Aires, the mothers of the disappeared. Their posters read, No more repression, and where is my son? As we listen to our reading from scripture, we hold in mind all those who have been tortured, those who have suffered miscarriages of justice, those who have been dealt with unfairly. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood, see to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. O Lord, we have acted unjustly by condemning people without cause. Pardon our dishonesty, and if we have to judge others in future, help us to do so with mercy and forbearance. Amen. The second station, Jesus receives the cross. In our picture, we see the soldiers armed not with swords, but with guns. And as Jesus is given his cross, most people go about their daily business turning a blind eye and taking no action over the tyranny being played out before them. The only witnesses are a shoeshine boy and an elderly couple, people of low social status. As we hear our reading in scripture, we hold in mind those opinions that are held by the majority, who perhaps look down on those who are of no use to them. We think of those who were called unskilled, who now are known as key workers. Then he handed them over to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. Heavenly Father, we have failed to defend the weak, the neglected and those who suffer unjustly. We implore your forgiveness and we pray for the courage to treat others as we would like you to treat us. Amen. The third station. Jesus falls for the first time under the cross. Brutal violence has weighed him down just like that which afflicts the farm workers, the urban poor. In the foreground we see Archbishop Oscar Romero of El Salvador, who was assassinated at the altar while celebrating Mass in 1980. As we hear our reading from Scripture, we think of those in our community whose lives have been cut short through violence. We think of the young men who have lost their lives to knife crime in the last few weeks. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. O oh Lord, help us to recognise our moral weakness, Help us to face the truth about ourselves and to strive earnestly to overcome the evil inclinations which help to obscure our vision of God's mercy and love. Amen. The fourth station. Jesus meets his afflicted mother. 
in one of the favelas or urban slums of Latin America, Mary, overwhelmed with grief, meets her condemned son. The people there lack essentials for life, such as safe water, sanitation, nutritious food, transport and meaningful work. But by self-help and solidarity, they build community and they get through. As we hear our reading from scripture, we think about the coming together across our community that is helping those who are self-isolated or shielded to get through as they are unable to access those things that they need to survive. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. Lord, as we consider the anguish which tore at Mary's heart as she followed her son on his way to a disgraceful death, we pray that her example would teach us to accept the true trials and the sorrows of life with resignation to God's will and confidence in his providence. Amen. The fifth station, the cross is given to Simon of Cyrene. Simon is portrayed in the picture as one of the millions of black people living in Latin America, descendants of those who were brought there under slavery while the native American Indians were being exterminated. This ethnic group have the lowest social status in the whole of Latin America and are often subject to victim blaming. As we hear our reading today, we think of those who experience racism or discrimination of any kind. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. O oh Lord, help us to conquer fear and anger. Help us to be at peace with ourselves and with other people as we endeavour to follow in the footsteps of your Son. Amen. The Sixth Station. Veronica cleans the face of Jesus. Of the 22 million Aztecs alive when Hernán Cortés entered Mexico, only a million remained by 1600. And here, Indian women represent Saint Veronica. They have wiped the face of Jesus. His features, now imprinted on the cloth, are their features. Could they be our features too? Is our identity shaped by Jesus? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to any of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. May the image of the suffering Saviour be imprinted on our hearts and minds. May we behold his countenance in the faces of the sick and the poor and in the victims of injustice, war, persecution and famine. Help us to act like Veronica here and now by practising patience and compassion, putting up with one another's failings and helping one another at all times. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. Each rope on the cross that can be seen amongst the land reform marches represents a murdered campesino, derecho a la tierra, right to the land, say their banners. Jesus taught people to pray for bread. Yet today, so many people 
are living in hunger, even as they farm and produce food for the rich who live elsewhere. As we listen to our reading, we think of the injustice that is felt throughout the world. Therefore, he had to be made like his brethren in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make reconciliation for the sins of people. For because he himself has suffered and been tempted, he is able to help those who are tempted. By freely accepting suffering and death, Jesus opened for us the channels of grace. Lord, help us to appreciate his kindness and mercy, and although it is humiliating to have to confess the same sin so often, never let this lead us to become oblivious to sin as we continue to place our confidence in you. Amen. The eighth station, the women of Jerusalem mourn our Lord. The biblical scene is transferred to Peru where many fathers and sons are killed and the women are left alone to provide for their families. They ask for justice and freedom from oppression. And as we hear our reading from scripture, we think of the people in our community who have been trafficked those who are sex workers and those who are living under oppression and violence in their homes. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and your children. O Lord, do not, do not let me accept kindness passively. Let me imitate the kindness of Christ. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Amen. The Ninth Station Jesus falls the third time under the cross. Jesus is depicted falling amid the homeless children and the unemployed youth in Brazil. As we hear today's reading, we think of the children in our community who are kept out of school, who are suffering for lack of opportunities to do anything meaningful with their time. We think of the teenagers who have been caught up in knife crime. For we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sinning. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. O oh Lord, there are days when life's burdens bruise and hurt us, when the road seems endless and our souls have lost their courage. Let not the power of evil discourage us, and as a desire to do your will inspired your Son, may the desire to imitate him give us the strength to overcome vanity, selfishness, laziness and all other faults. Amen. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. As Jesus is stripped of his clothes by the soldiers who gamble for them, in the same way the earth is stripped of her clothes, her soils, her waters, her forests, to fuel our great economy, where need is dwarfed by greed. 
In the foreground, Chico Mendes lies assassinated. To Jesus, the earth was God's footstool, the sacred resting place of divine presence. As we hear today's reading, we think of the destruction of our world that continues even to this day in order to satisfy our desires. The soldiers took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see which it shall be. This was to fulfil the scripture, They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Lord, help us to accept with resignation all the humiliations and disappointments of this world. Strip us of pretense, deception, conceit, pride and greed. Teach us to value honesty, sincerity and truth and give us the courage to live up to our Christian convictions, whatever the cost may be. Amen. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. Jesus is nailed to his cross just as the poor are nailed to the rich through monetarism and the sin of charging interest. Investors may think they're innocently seeking the best rate of return, but by doing so, they power an economic system where the poor supply unearned income to the rich. As we listen to our reading, we think of the injustices in our own economic system. We think of the one million people who have had to apply for universal credit in the last couple of weeks. We think of those unable to leave the house to work. Those parts of our economy that have fallen or been destroyed. And when they came to the place which is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Lord Jesus, you were wounded for our iniquities and pierced for our sins. Have pity on our weakness and give us the courage to abolish selfishness and greed from our own lives and to endeavour to heal the wounds caused by prejudice, distrust and hatred in today's world. The Twelfth Station Jesus dies on the cross. The whole world is being crucified by the spirit of violence and the two halves, the north and the south, the rich and the poor, heaven and earth, have been ripped apart and yet still the cross unites them. As we listen to our reading, we hold in mind all that unites us with the rest of humanity we hold in mind the communion of saints. After this, knowing that all was now finished, Jesus said, to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Lord Jesus, by your cruel death, you have opened for us the way to eternal life. Teach us to be generous and to serve you as you deserve to be served. 
Teach us to give and not to count the cost, to labour and to ask for no reward, save only the knowledge that we are striving to do your will. Amen. The thirteenth station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. As Jesus is taken down, the people gather in anticipation of Easter. All around the world, small groups gather. And yet here we are, isolated, locked in our houses, unable to gather except to connect by electronic means. As we listen to our reading, we hold in mind the global church and we look forward to that time when we can be joined together again and celebrate in person all that unites us. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus and Pilate gave him leave. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who had at first come to him by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Lord, keep us always mindful of the certainty of our own death. And though the thought may be unattractive, we know that Jesus has already passed through death and has gone to prepare a place for us, so that where he is, we may be also. Help us to face death with resignation and with confidence in your mercy and love. Amen. The fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. Here Jesus is laid to rest beside a rubbish tip in a polluted industrial nation. As we listen to our reading, we remember that we have come from the earth and to the earth we shall return, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And he brought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of rock. And he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw where he was laid. Eternal Father, like Jesus, we too shall be laid in the grave, when it shall please you, and wheresoever it shall please you. As Jesus rose in glory on the third day, we dare to hope that through the merits of his passion and death, we shall be raised to live and reign with him in your heavenly home. Amen. We have grieved as is right for the sufferings of our Lord. We have grieved for our own sins. Let us also rejoice and give thanks for this day of our salvation. The cross is our salvation. The cross is our hope. The cross is our union with God. The cross is the victory won for us over sin and death. So let us pray for the coming of the kingdom in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ delivered and saved humanity, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rain down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. So as you stay home, do so in peace, to love and serve the Lord. Amen.